In this video, I'm going to give you three reasons on why Dolby Atmos and really any immersive music mixing is such a sensitive topic for anyone in the music production industry. And at the end, I'm going to give you an even better reason on why it is imperative for us as mixing engineers and producers to know how it works. Let's get started. Look, we cannot force the idea of Dolby Atmos onto the consumer. And there are a lot of people that claim that it is just as bad as Quad and 5.1. But I think the reason why people have such a negative opinion about it is because they haven't put any effort to learn or understand why we think it's so cool. And let me be clear, I am not saying you have to go out and buy an expensive rig or even produce in the format in general. Atmos and really any immersive technology for the music industry is still super new. So it might just be better to wait. The first bit of info I wanna go ahead and give to you guys is that just because a song is mixed in Atmos does not, and I repeat, does not make it sound good just because it is put into this fancy format. And while there are a lot of things to consider so it does sound good, it doesn't make it any harder to mix a song in the first place. And what drives me nuts even more is when people start throwing around this rumor that it only sounds good when it's done right. Yes, and so does any other song done in any other format. If you want professional results, expect yourself to have professional skills and possibly equipment. Now this isn't to say you can't just go ahead and start learning about it. Just the same as anyone opening up their DAW for the first time ever in their life. Just because they have a DAW doesn't mean you can make music. It doesn't just work because it exists. And I promise you, there are some bad mixes made by professional engineers, which I think was due to the lack of accessibility to equipment during COVID. And many mixing engineers had to rely on headphones to create a spatial mix using the binaural renderer. Again, it is so new to the music industry that there are a lot of bad practices just being thrown around left and right. For example, using the LFE can cause issues in a mix if you don't utilize it properly. It is typically not advised to use it solely for bass management or even at all, depending on the song. In many cases, low passing the signal and adding some kind of saturation plugin before sending it to the LFE directly will prevent sacrificing the low end in your mix. But I could go on for hours about best practices and cool techniques you can use in your Atmos system. If you would like to learn more about that kind of thing, be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like so I can keep doing them for you guys. But anyways, let's go on to reason number two. It's complicated. While this kind of goes hand in hand with the first idea I mentioned, it really gets a little more extended than what it does with stereo, especially when talking about translation between all devices. And just because you have the ability to do something in a mix doesn't mean you should always do it. And again, this applies to stereo. Sometimes a mix calls for heavy low end. And if most of your listeners are listening to a good sound system or on headphones, your audience will probably appreciate you for doing so but it's not for everyone. And when people mention that you have so much ability to mess with a mix and ruin it by just panning it a little outside of the main stereo left and right, it really makes me wonder what kind of stereo mixes they are listening to or putting out on their own. Because most home producers do have the ability to just throw out whatever they can into the world of streaming music. And more times than not, they're still following best practices as the professionals are. Meaning they check their music in the car, on headphones, on their stereo life, left and right speakers. So in theory, why can't we just do this with Atmos too? Well, you can, most people are just lazy. And while we're on this specific topic, I just wanna put out a note there. I learned a an idea from a guy named Justin Gray uh, he has his own YouTube channel about Atmos mixing and Atmos mastering. That's a whole can of worms right there we'll go into in another video. But the concept he mentioned is that if you are mixing for an artist and your sole purpose isn't to create the sound as best as possible with the technology we have nowadays, then what are you mixing music for? More and more songwriters are hearing their song in a way they never thought they could and are astonished by the quality in which we are able to provide to them. And I think being able to learn and at least understand the capability of an Atmos mix can really help with the creative intent with an artist, even if you aren't able to provide an immersive mix right away. And reason number three, it doesn't sound like the stereo version. Yes, 
Why didn't I think of this sooner? Of course it's going to sound different. And I think every song made before 2020 that has been mixed for stereo probably didn't have the intention to be mixed in any immersive format unless it was for maybe a movie. The issue with this is that when a song is created in Apple's spatial audio, you have the opportunity to be added to a special playlist full of songs that were also mixed this way. And while Apple prevents you from uploading songs that are strictly up mixed entirely from a stereo version, meaning with no multi-tracks, this doesn't stop anyone from making a poor mix out of a good song. And some older songs are harder to create in a three-dimensional plane due to the limitations of the amount of tracks that were provided. So this isn't entirely the engineer's fault and it's really nobody's fault at this point. But the idea I'm trying to get across here is that when a song is mixed in this format, a lot of people have this expectation that it's going to be some kind of monumental experience that makes it better or louder just because it was mixed in this way. And I'm honestly pretty bad about this. Sometimes I expect a song to have this cool immersive effect because that's what I had in my mind for the intent of the song. But more times than I want it to be, it's just okay. The mixing engineer also has to make sure they're not ruining the original creative intent that the song was mixed for. This is why in especially older songs, you don't have voices moving all around you and spinning and all sorts of wacky, crazy stuff because that was not the original song's intent. While that might be kind of cool, that's not what they would have wanted. And I can't speak for every artist, but that is typically how it goes. Another thing to consider when mixing a song in Atmos is that people expect the song to utilize every single channel and that's, that's also not true. You don't have to have stuff always in the height channels or in the sides or the rears or even the center channel. You could make a mix entirely in the rear of the room if that's what you wish. The Beach Boys did this with their song In My Room, which a lot of the vocals come from the side surrounds and the top to make it kind of feel like the, the vocals are surrounding you, but it sounds more like it's coming from the back rather than in the front where the drums and the guitar are. And before you head out and click off this video, I wanna leave you with this bit of wisdom. If you are running your music like a business, the average consumer often doesn't care about what the song sounds like. And as long as the song is popular enough and it sounds pretty good at the highest quality it can be, they're still gonna listen to it. But that reason alone should not prevent you as a producer, mixing, mastering engineer, whatever you are, from providing the highest quality of audio possible to the consumer, especially the people that do appreciate it. To me, it's like people that listen to vinyl. There are a lot of artists that just slap it on there with a WAV file and call it good, whereas some others I really enjoy because they had the intent to make it to its highest quality as possible for vinyl. And this next generation of audio files deserve no less of an experience to appreciate. If we were only mixing for the average consumer, we might as well just be mixing through our iPhone speakers. But I don't wanna do that, and I know you don't wanna do that, because we love what we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it. But anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like if you did, and be sure to check out my other content. I hope to see you guys in the next video.